first regulated online Bitcoin casino appeared in 2014, and since then, billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin have been wagered online. These casinos have all sorts of games, such as roulette, slots, blackjack, but one of the more popular ones I've been seeing recently is this game of Crash. For those of you who aren't familiar with Crash, here's a brief overview of how the game works. Players have a couple of seconds to place their bets before the multiplier begins. The multiplier starts at 1 and begins to increase, and players are allowed to cash out at any point, multiplying their bet by the amount on the screen. However, if the player waits too long to cash out, and the multiplier crashes, then they lose everything that they just bet. This multiplier can immediately crash at 1 and all players lose their bets, but it can also go into the thousands and even the hundreds of thousands in some cases. Now, I've seen a couple videos and posts on strategies to try to profit off of this game, uh, which unfortunately is just not possible. A lot of these casinos actually post the code behind their games, so I thought it'd be cool to take a look at this code and see mathematically why this game is just not possible to be in the long term. The two functions we're going to look at are this generate hash function, which links the games together, and then also this crash point from hash function, which calculates the multiplier for each game. So we can see if you click on the results of any game, there's this hash that's associated with it. So I've replicated these two functions in Python, and we can see that if we plug this game hash that we just found into the get result function, we get this 1.34, which was the result of the game that we just saw. Now when we plug the hash of the game into this get previous game function, we get this new hash. And if we look, we can see that this hash actually turns out to be the hash of the game that came just before the one we were looking at. So this casino actually gives us the hash of the very first game, so we can keep using this get previous game function as well as the get result function, and we can find the results of every game that has ever been played. So here we have the hash of the very first game, and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hash of the game that just happened and continue to get the hash of the previous games until we end up with this hash of the very first game. And as we go along, we're gonna keep track of the results so that we end up with the results of every game that has ever happened. So after running this code, we can see that there's been almost 620,000 games, and now we have the results for each one of these games as well. We also see that the minimum result is one, and the maximum result is this 658,000 that we saw from earlier. So here's the distribution of these 620,000 games, and this tail over here actually goes a lot further, but the bins are just too small to be able to see. So let's take a closer look at the math behind this get result function. We can see that we're passing in this game hash, and what these first couple of lines do right here is basically create a new hash out of this hash that we pass in. And hashes are really just hexadecimal numbers, so we're taking this new hash and we're checking if it's divisible by 33. And if it is, that's when the function returns one and all players immediately lose their bets. This means that about 3% of the time, the game will instantly crash. When the number isn't divisible by 33, the multiplier is calculated using this function here. So here's a derivation of this formula to put it into a form that's easier to manage, and it basically turns into this 1 over a uniform 0 to 1 distribution, uh, which is just 1 over a random decimal from 0 to 1. And a cool property about this distribution is that for any multiplier, the probability that this multiplier is less than some value x is actually about 1 minus 1 over x. So the probability that the multiplier is less than 2 is about 1 half, the probability that it's less than 10 is about 90%, and so on. So I actually simplified a little bit going from this step here to going to the next step. They're not completely equal, and I found that using this formula here was actually off by a couple decimal places, so I'm going to use the above formula instead just so we can get more accurate results. So now that we have these two cases figured out, we can find the overall probability that a multiplier is less than or equal to a certain amount. So we have this 3% chance that the game crashes instantly, and then we have this 97% chance that we use this formula up here. So you can see that we just copied it right over. We have the 0.01, and then we have this 0.99 here. And lastly, since we found this property for one over the uniform 0, 1 distribution, we can just plug this one minus one over X in right here. So I've coded our final formula into Python here, and we're gonna test it against the real results that we saw uh, to see if we have an accurate formula. So let's try it with a multiplier of two, and we can see that the real results had 52% uh, of results less than two, and now when we use our formula, we get 52% as well. Um, so we could try it with a higher number such as 10, 
Um, we can see that about 90.4% of results were less than 10, and we get the same thing from our formula. Now we'll try it for 100, and we can see that that matches. And now we'll try a small number, like 1.01, .01, and we can see that it should be about 4.9%, and it looks like that matches as well. So now we can calculate the expected value of a $1 bet on multiplier X. So all we really need to do is take the probability of losing and multiply it by the negative $1 that we would be losing. And then we take the probability of winning, which is just one minus the probability of losing. And we're gonna multiply this by the multiplier minus one. Uh, for example, if our multiplier is two, we would be winning $1. So now let's see how accurate our expected value formula is. We can see that with a multiplier of two here, the expected uh, loss per game is about three and a half cents. And based on the results from the actual games, we get about three and a half cents as well. So now let's change this multiplier to something smaller, like 1.05. So now we're getting a loss of about 3.1 cents. And when we look at the results from the actual games, we also get a loss of about 3.1 cents. So here I've plotted the expected value by multiplier, and the blue line is the theoretical expected value based off of our formula, and the orange line is actually based on the results of the games that we collected. So we can see that they follow each other pretty well, and we can also see that everything is in this range of, of losing about 3 to 4% of the bet. We can also see that the expected loss is less when we're betting lower multipliers, around 1 to 2, and um, we're only losing about 3%, but as the multiplier starts to increase, that's when the loss goes to about 4%. So this graph here kind of shows why it's not going to be possible to beat this game in the long term, because there's just no way to turn these negative expected value bets into something that has a positive expected value. So one way that people try to beat this game is using what's known as the Martingale strategy. And this is basically doubling your bet every time you lose uh, to try to make up for that money. Or in this case, doubling your bet every time it crashes below two. And we can see the total bets here increasing each time that the multiplier crashes below two, and it eventually reaches 1500. So it looks like people are using this strategy, and it would work if you had an infinite bankroll, but unfortunately there's a max profit of 10,000 on most of these websites. So I found the probability of losing each amount of games in a row, and I put them all into this spreadsheet. So starting with the $2 bet, you can see here we're doubling it each time that we would lose. And the total wagered is just the sum of all the bets so far. And each time you can see that the potential win is exactly $2 more than the total amount that we've wagered. And here we have the probability of losing this many games in a row. So to calculate the expected value, we wanna take negative one times the total amount that we've wagered, and we wanna multiply this by the probability of losing our total wager. And then we wanna add the total profit, and we wanna multiply by one minus the probability of losing. And this will give us our expected value. We can see that they are all gonna be negative. So this strategy has a high probability of winning a small amount of money and a low probability of losing a large amount of money, and the loss actually outweighs the gain in this case. So this pretty much sums up the video and explains why this game is just always gonna be in the casino's favor. This was actually the first YouTube video I've ever made, and I really enjoyed making it, and I wanna make more videos in the future about probability and money. So if you think you'd be interested in these future videos, please subscribe or leave a like or comment on this video it would just let me know that there's people that are interested in topics like these. So yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.